Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, we are very happy to see you, and we are very happy um, to have Higin here with us today, who is going uh, to tell us about slow modes and um, will take us uh, into and out of the hydrodynamic regime, I suppose. <coughs> uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, being here, Higin. Uh, the stage is yours. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. So for uh, for the organizers and also for everyone for coming to my uh, discussion, uh, to my presentations. So I uh, I um, listened to some of the um, recordings on the YouTube and I really uh, like the seminar series, also in particular the discussion afterwards. So I'm much look into that. And so today I would like to tell you about is the uh, slow modes, but in the uh, non hydrodynamic regions. So what I hope is that uh, my discussion would uh, be very also useful for people uh, who are doing the holographies. So I will talking about first the median response at the non-hydrodynamic region. I will discuss some uh, extension of hydrodynamics similar to Mueller serial Stewart theory, but uh, it's different. Uh, it's extension, so it's called MS star. And finally, I will talk about the far from equilibrium and uh, quark gluon plasma and existence. So, so this uh, this is based on my recent work and the work in um, preparations. All right. And so, uh, so let me begin with some uh, general introductions. So, if I uh, suppose I'm considering uh, uh, many body systems, at the first glance, you would find that its characterization can be very uh, difficult because it involves lots of degree freedoms, which are interact with very potentially very sophisticated interactions. But on the other hand, we also know that uh, you can make substantial uh, simplifications. Uh, in many cases, because the relevant degree of freedoms is actually reduced, you don't need to keep track of all the microscopic degree of freedoms. Uh, one example of uh, such a situation is a system near the critical point, right? M many of the properties of the system in that cases is determined by the uh, enhanced fluctuation of the order parameter fields. And perhaps one of the most prominent example in which the reduction of the grid free node occur is the hydrodynamics. If you consider near equilibrium system in the low wavelengths and the low uh, time limit, all you need to uh, you, all you need to do is to solve in the hydrodynamic equations. Perhaps you need to add fluctuations, but in any cases, you can break down an effective series in this long time and the non uh, with wavelength limit. And also in these cases, the slow, the, the relevant degree freedoms or the slow modes are uh, relatively simple to identify. They are nothing but the energy and the momentum and densities which are conserved. Therefore, their damping rate will vanish in this so-called hydrodynamical limit. And but the question I would like to ask uh, ask myself, uh, I wish to discuss is the identification of the possible slow modes beyond these hydrodynamic regions. In general, clearly this is very difficult uh, questions, but I would like to report some uh, um, progress, which I think are quite um, uh, 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 quite interesting. And so, so far my discussion is uh, quite general, but I would also like to uh, um, put my discussions in some specific context. Namely, we, we uh, one of the actually our motivations is to understand the, uh, the quark long plasmas uh, better. So what is the quark gluon plasma? So uh, you can think about this quark gluon plasma is the deconfined, uh, deconfined thermal state of the QCDs. So the usually quarks and gluons are confined in the protons, but if you heat the well heated QCD vacuum up, you can get a, a, such a decomposed, uh, deconfined thermal states. And, uh, and, in, uh, and in fact, uh, such as, uh, this formal method can also be recreated in heavy collisions just by uh, colliding to faster moving uh, nuclei. You, you could uh, create the mediums with very, very high temperatures and, uh, and it expands. And so it's fair to say that up to now we uh, we learned a lot both from experiments and also from theory about the uh, QGPs. So uh, so we know that if you consider its a specific shear viscosity, eta O S, it's smaller than most of the materials that you can create on the Earth. 
And also importantly, is this ratio is very close to the results if you are computing the strongly coupled and super young meals series, right? I, I believe the audience are familiar with this. So what it has is this really, uh, so this also uh, uh, tell us something very interesting is by studying quark one plasmas, maybe we, we can learn some qualitative license about other strongly coupled uh, gauge series. All right, and so in this slide, I want to um, briefly summarize so some um, some future directions in the study of the uh, uh, this quark ground matters, or more generally, the phase diagram of the QCDs. So, so this is the sketch of the QCD phase diagrams as a function of temperature and the variant chemical potentials. And so one interesting uh, direction is to extend our knowledge about the QGP at the relatively small baryon chemical regions to the to the baryon rich regions, studying the baryon rich QCD matters. And for example, uh, I think one of the focus in the current and um, in nowadays are the search for the creative QCD critical point, the landmark point in the phase diagrams. And also um, by learning more about the baryon rich QCD matters, we could learn. Uh, uh, we may also make connections about uh, the properties of the neutron stars. And on the other hand, the modern uh, development of condensed, condensed matter series tells us that uh, not only the thermodynamic properties of the system are important, the quantum and the topological aspect of the QCD matter is also very important. For example, uh, I think there are several talks in this uh, seminar series, which is uh, uh, which discussed the spin observables, which has been uh, measured in the heavy uh, collisions and uh, has also motivated a lot of theoretical development. And but uh, in my talk, I would like to talk about uh, the properties of these quark gluon plasmas beyond the hydrodynamic limit or the thermodynamic limit. So what do I mean? How should I think about uh, the properties of the QGP in the non-hydro hydro regions? So, uh, so this is the cartoon and uh, this is the cartoon that uh, I would like to show you. So uh, uh, if, if we remember that the QCD has the property of the asymptotic free, we, we would imagine that if you go to the very, very high energy scales, it should behave like some weakly coupled interacting uh, quark, uh, interacting platonic gas, like interact the weakly coupled quark and gluon gas. On the other hand, uh, as I just mentioned, that at the very uh, long distances, it behaves like fluid with very small shear viscosities. So then the natural question is, how does the what is the properties in these intermediate regions? And clearly, this is a non-trivial regions because the interaction, so uh, because the uh, the typical energy scales can be. Uh, maybe, uh, can still be uh, uh, much larger than the hydrodynamic limit. So you cannot use the fluid descriptions. On the other hand, the energy is not large enough so that we can do the uh, perturbative, uh, reli uh, perturbative reliable uh, perturbative calculations. So this is, the, I think, one of the unexplored regions, but this is also the important regions. Without this for me, uh, without uh, better understand th these regions, we don't have a no whole picture about this quark gluon uh, interacting systems. Uh, in fact, when we are talking about uh, the properties of QGP in, the, uh, in these regions, uh, we, we, we can ask uh, um, uh, the questions from uh, different angles. And then my uh, talk, we are first uh, focus on the first two uh, angles or the perspectives. And the first one is I would like to ask how the median response will, uh, how the mystery response will depends on the gradient of the perturbations. And the second thing is I would uh, ask what, how does the QCD property and changes from the, uh, uh, if we, you put the uh, system out of equilibrium, imagine we have a QGP with the very expansion pension rate. So, and in fact, in particular, I would uh, focus on is the qualitative features uh, of this low mass in these regions by studying some um, QGP like uh, systems. And um, hopefully, we can discuss, uh, although uh, most of my studies inspired by studying the QGP like systems, uh, maybe, uh, maybe we can draw some more general license in other condensed matter uh, systems or strongly covered systems. Okay. So, um, so let me now begin um, by discussing the uh, median response. So, uh, so physically, we could imagine we have a system which is in equilibrium. We can create some 
uh, uh, inhomogeneous disturbance, and uh, uh, we can have some add some sources which depends on the gradients. So let us work on let us work uh, in the linearized regions. So in these cases, clearly the excitations, the medians excitations will determine the response of medians to such a disturbance. And uh, in general, there are many, many excitations which would contribute. But what we know is for sufficiently small k, for k smaller than some uh, region which sets the boundary of the hydrodynamic uh, uh, limit, then the hydro modes are a well dominant response because as I mentioned, the damping rate uh, uh, it will, uh, is guaranteed to be gapped from the other excitations for, some, for, for significantly small gradients. But uh, now we want to ask the question is, uh, what are the excitations with the non-hydrodynamic gradient? Uh, uh, at the long, uh, of course, eventually, for the QGP-like systems, you will see the quasar particle excitations. But the question is, what is this in between? And is there any some simple and um, some modes which will dominate the response? And, and of course, at this moment, we have we uh, questions or? OK, so uh, yes, um, so maybe let me continue. And uh, so uh, clearly, uh, so uh, admittedly, uh, we, we, uh, at this moment, we do not know, know how to solve the QCD in this non-perturbative and non-hydrogenic regions from the first principles. But uh, the strategy that we can use is just to consider the QCD like a series, and we can even take in the limiting cases and ask what are the similarities or the differences. So in one, uh, uh, in the, uh, so if you uh, if you uh, you consider uh, some QCD like systems which are described by the weakly coupled and quasi particles, you clearly could use the kinetic series. And in the most of my talk, I will uh, first take the so called relaxation time approximation, which tell uh, which tells you that the by collisions those distribution function we are relaxed to the equilibrium expectations with the rate given by tau r the relaxation time. So this is a crude, uh, very crude estimations, but it uh, captures the qualitative physics that I'm interested in, the transition from the hydrodynamic behavior to uh, the quasar particle like behaviors by changing the uh, energy scales. And so this is the illustration of the analytic structure of the retarded Green's functions. So I guess most of uh, you are familiar with that. So basically, is if you look at the non-hydrodynamic sectors, there's a branch cut associated with the um, quasi-particle excitations. On the other hand, if you take a look at the ads CIVT, um results, so think about the uh, supersymmetric YAMIL series in the strongly coupled. And I mean, we see that the non in the non-hydrodynamic sectors, uh, there are the poles associated with quasar particles. And so from this point of view, you might say that the, uh, the excitations between this weakly coupled uh, series and the strongly coupled looks quite different, right? It's the one is the branch card, the other are the and cross number modes, you might think that the only thing those two theories share in common is in the hydrodynamic limit. There are some hydrodynamics modes. Any other shared, but, but you might think that there's no shared features beyond the hydrodynamic regions. And however, what we found is interesting is if you uh, uh, look at it more carefully, you do find something that uh, those two uh, series, those series representing two extremes have some common features. And so, uh, so let me show you. So in the left, I'm showing you the um, dispersive relations in the sound channel for the kinetic series on the relaxation time approximations. So this uh, red curve shows the, um, the sound amount. So this, uh, the hydrodynamic region is illustrated in the, uh, in this uh, is illustrated by this uh, shaded magenta areas. So as we can see here is the, um, and so what we can see here is if you are going beyond the hydrodynamic regions, indeed the first of all the hydrodynamics as showing in this blue curve uh, fails to describe the dispersion of the sound waves. And adding more gradient wouldn't, uh, wouldn't improve the descriptions um, to, uh, to, uh, substan to some substantial extent. But what is important is this sound mode continues to exist. And if you compare its damping rate with the non-hydrodynamic citations, and I would, uh, it's easy to see that they are gapped to each other, meaning if you are waiting long enough, 
this sound mode will continue. The sound mode outside the hydrodynamic region will uh, continue to dominate the um, um, dynamics. Now let us turn to the um, um, the so-called uh, ADS safety results. Uh, in fact, this is a uh, results I borrowed from the um, papers uh, um, papers by the uh, FT groups. Uh, so you can see here once again we see that the um, uh, even though the non hydrodynamic excitations, the quasar normal modes are different as compared with the quasar particle excitations, the sound mode also continue exists. And the gap between the um, uh, high, uh, this non hydrodynamic modes and the sound waves is also uh, is there. Meaning once again, there's a uh, there's a domain that the um, uh, there's a domain that the uh, sound wave is uh, will dominate the um, dominant response. So this motivates to introduce the uh, concept of the so-called uh, extended hydrodynamic regions. Namely, the, in these regions, the sound mode exists and is gapped from the other uh, non-hydrodynamic uh, non excitations. And what does that mean is the, if you want to talk about the response, there's still only um, in this uh, sound, sound in this um, longitudinal uh, sectors, there's still only one slow mode. There's no, you, uh, we don't, uh, the, all the other modes are not uh, that relevant. And another reason that we call this region as the extended uh, hydrodynamic region is because, um, uh, it's just because that the, um, uh, it's just because that the, um, it's this perceived relation is really different from the, um, uh, it's different from the usual, um, uh, it's different from the usual hydrodynamics. So that's, um, uh, so that's the um, uh, so that's why it's extended regions, uh, and, and in fact, in a condensed matter systems, this uh, this sound wave is referred as the high uh, high frequency sound. So let me uh, so here is uh, some um, papers uh, about uh, the this uh, high frequency uh, sound modes of, uh, as observed in the liquid uh, metals. In fact, there's um, a variety of materials which. Uh, exhibits the, the sound wave which dominates the uh, response by the uh, but outside the hydrodynamic regime. So, example in the, in the these cases, these modes uh, continue to exist even at the scales very close to the in, interatomic uh, scales. Meaning, this is not the uh, usual sound waves; it's uh, outside the usual uh, hydrodynamic regions. Okay, and so uh, so this slide I want to also summarize some shared uh, properties of this high frequency sound modes in as seen in the kinetic theory and in the uh, uh, super Yamios series. So the first thing we can see is if you compare its phase velocities, the phase velocities in in both cases is above the one uh, square root of one third above the ordinary uh, hydrodynamic sound waves. On the other hand, you, we also see that the, if you compare the extrapolated damping rate with respect to the, uh, um, uh, the, this high frequency sound wave, we can see the sound wave has less, uh, has a smaller damping rate. So what does that mean is that the, um, so the physically we can interpret this results as follows. If you go to the larger and the larger gradients, the more and more degree freedoms are out of equilibrium and this will typically result in a stiffer equation state or larger effective sound velocities. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, on the other hand, because more and more degree freedoms are out of the brains, so that the um uh, out of so that the it introduced less dissipative effects and uh, uh, less dissipative effects, meaning the effective damping rate is also uh, also smaller. So um. And so the main message I want to convey is if you think about the properties of, of the high frequency sound mode, it indeed uh, tells us some properties of the mediums at this uh, in this extended hydrodynamic regions. And so, uh, so now comes to our conjectures. So, uh, so we see that the high frequency uh, sound sound modes will dominate in a class of non-relativistic condensed matter systems. We see the dollar is uh, such extended high region um, also exists for the uh, weakly coupled uh, kinetic theory or strongly coupled uh, super Yamil series. We may uh, it's natural to consider that this region is also uh, is also there for the Pagron plasmas. And so this is our uh, conjectures that it's possible that if we 
uh, increasing the gradients for the QGPs, we have an intermediate region where the high frequency sound for the QGP will dominate the uh, risk response. I think this is a quite a non-trivial scenario because if you think about the QCD, um, QCD vacuums, the pion is the only uh, is the effective uh, effective degree freedoms at scale smaller than the uh, decay constant of the F pi. But if you go to the uh, the scale larger than the F the pi, so you need to include more degree freedoms such as the uh, other resonance like the raw mesons. But here our claim is by going to the intermediate regions, we don't need to introduce more uh, degree free. Uh, the the dominant degree free is still sound wave, although they have different damping rate and, uh, and different. Uh, uh, velocities. So one nice thing about this conjecture is uh, in these intermediate regions, the way to characterize the medians become uh, will be simplified because all we need to care about is just uh, the properties of this uh, uh, high frequency sum. Just like in the hydrodynamic limit, if we want to do some dynamics, we just look at the speed of sum. So now comes to the uh, questions. So let us assume that the uh, we have a systems with the extended hydrodynamic regions, and we have the dominance of these high frequency sound waves. Can we describe them? How can we extend? Can we really extend the hydrodynamic framework to describe uh, uh, describe the high uh, describe uh, the physics outside the hydrodynamic regions? And so, uh, of course, there are many real motivations of doing that. For example, um, for example, our hope is to have a, a theory for the uh, for these extended hydrodynamic regions, which could describe the different systems. Another thing we, uh, which is important in the heavy ion collision context, is we need, if we wish to test our conjecture about the extended hydrodynamic regions. We need a data model comparison. We need to do the data model comparisons. So we need to construct some hydrodynamic like uh, modeling, uh, some hydrodynamic like series to make such a data and model comparisons. And finally, I should mention is the extended hydrodynamic. Uh, hydrodynamics is also a very active field in the condensed matter physics. So, uh, so in what follows, I would uh, tell you our proposals. We wish to, pro uh, so what we do is consider extension of the Mueller Israel series, which we call the MS stars. And we shall see that the, this extension indeed serves, um, serves the purpose. Okay, so, um, so, uh, so be before talking about the extension of the MS stars, so let me begin um, by remind you about some key ingredients about this the the standard Mueller is real Stewart uh, series. So let us consider the stress energy tensor T mu mu. Uh, we could uh, decompose this uh, compo decompose it into the ideal part and the called the remaining part of the pi mu mu. So this pi mu mu we are vanishes in the absence of the gradients. So it uh, describes the non equilibrium corrections to the stress energy tensors. And, uh, um, and, in the, and, and, the, and the, when the gradient is small, you can take into account all the gradient corrections order by orders. For example, uh, let us consider conformal fluid throughout. At the first order ingredient, we get uh, the, this pi mu mu is proportional to the symmetric part of the fluid gradient or the shear stress times the coefficient, which is called the shear viscosities. And so now, uh, now uh, if we wish to extend our description beyond the hydrodynamic regions, one natural choice is, is just add more and more higher order gradient terms. For example, we can add the second order terms and the um, second order terms, third order terms. There's a lot of development with that. And also related to this is to discuss the uh, radius of convergence of the hydrodynamics. Um, but in fact, there's alternative approaches. Maybe uh, uh, this approach is very, uh, been, uh, very systematic, but alternatively, we may have some phenomenological or but perhaps economical way of doing that. Uh, in, a, the, in the spirit of the Mueller is uh, still with the theory, uh, what they do is promote this pi mu as a dynamical variables and require this pi mu mu relax to the first order hydrodynamic limit at a rate given by tau pi. And so uh, since, in, uh, since it's important to understand how the higher, uh, 
Ridden effects enters in the MS series. So I want to uh, take a look at the sound channels. So in sound channels, we can determine the dispersive relations by solving these familiar equations, right? And uh, the um, uh, and uh, uh, and one important ingredient enters in this equation is this uh, term I denoted by nu as a function of frequency. You can think about this is a momentum effective momentum diffusive constant. Which in the cases of the um, uh, in the cases of the MS series, it uh, depends on the frequencies, and uh, uh, and if you expand it, you can see that uh, at a, a frequency equals to zero, uh, this uh, new uh, approaches the familiar results given by eta over epsilon plus uh, the pressures, but there are also higher order gradients. So now we can let us imagine in some microscopic series, you can also compute this. And uh, frequency dependent the, um, on diffusive constants. And you can also uh, expand it in powers of, of, of the frequencies. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, uh, one may think, uh, say, let, how about uh, let us just uh, fine tune this tau pi so that uh, the, this, uh, uh, these functions will match to the microscopic calculations. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this function in the MS series will match to the microscopic calculations by tuning tau pi. And, uh, and indeed, this may work in some cases, but in general not, because we only have one parameters, but, uh, the, um, but this diffusive constant from a generic microscopic calculation can be, um, in, uh, can, be, uh, can be more than that. But on the other hand, this also tells us uh, how, to, uh, how to generalize this uh, uh, Mueller uh, uh, this MS series, and this is our proposals. So uh, what we are considering, so our key observations, why not just uh, rewrite the primary mu as a summation of some, uh, some uh, as a summation of some, um, some field, uh, some tensor field indexed by A. So A can be one, two, three. Uh, we, in general, we can have n, n of them, or we can even promote A as some internal variables and uh, replace the summation of, uh, with, uh, with the integrations. And so clearly, when a equals to one, we just reduce to, to the um, uh, usual MS series, and we could uh, even give each of this uh, um, pi field with some dynamics. We can write down some uh, MS like uh, uh, dynamical equations, but we can assign the different relaxation rate for uh, for the pi with the different a, and we and and we can require them to relax to. Um, to the uh, shear stress with some different uh, pre prefactors, so denoted by eta a's. And so, uh, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. What distinguishes the different a's? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this just an arbitrary separation or uh, there is yeah. some physical distinction? And so at this point, it's just, uh, just uh, consider some generalization. It's just a label. It's just like one, two, three, four, and uh, the, of course you you could imagine that we can um, just uh, distinguish uh, distinguish uh, order them by the value of tau pi a. Say we require tau pi one is smaller than tau pi two, etc. Or but at this point, it's purely a label. Mm. I, I will come more to that and. Um, and uh, so uh, uh, it's easy to check. In order to reproduce the first order hydrodynamics, you need to require the summation of all the etas, uh, eta a's uh, to, uh, to give the shear viscosities. And but I said, so, so essentially this theory has um, the two and minus one uh, uh, free parameters, right? A equals one. Like we have one pair of free parameters. But if you include the two months, we have three free parameters, et cetera. And so I think what is nice about it is now we have more hand, uh, more freedom to match to the this uh, uh, frequency dependent diffusive constant as computed in some microscopic series. One way to do that is, for example, we can tune in this eta a tau a's to reproduce the uh, gradient expansion coefficients of this uh, functions, right? Uh, suppose we have enough number of the uh, of the fields of the modes, we can do that. Or another way to uh, which I will we will pursue is maybe we only need a few modes to capture the main features of this uh, of this microscopic series. And in these cases, this theory looks more and um, uh, will becomes very convenient as I now um, try to uh, demonstrate. 
so here that has just considered the simplest uh, version of MS star. So we only in, uh, include the two fields. We just uh, decompose pi into two, pi one and pi two. Actually, we made an even more simple uh, simplification is we uh, require the, will, uh, the, the relaxation rate of the second part is much smaller than the first part. So in this case, it's the results does not even sensitive to the uh, tau pi two, uh, or, or put it another way is this pi two, we are quickly relaxed to the, uh, relaxed to the uh, shear stress with some coefficient we, uh, uh, with the coefficient we, we will name it eta twos. So physically you can think about this eta two is some effective viscosities in the extended hydrodynamic regions. On the other hand, the power pi one still involves and the relaxation rate of tau pi one controls the boundary separating the hydro region and the extended hydrodynamic uh, hydro region and extended hydrodynamic regions. And now uh, in the next slides, I will show you uh, how this uh, how this theory really uh, works. And I will present the results in terms of the dimensionless ratios. The delta is the ratio between eta two over eta, and the gamma is the ratio between tau pi one over tau pi. So it's very easy to check. For example, if gamma one, uh, gamma equals to one, we get the usual MS series. And when gamma equals to zero, we get the first order hydro hydrodynamics. So, uh, of course, they should be because they are just some limiting case of our new extensions. So, uh, so in this slide, so I'm like, uh, would I would like to revisit the uh, sound mode in the uh, kinetic series. So, this uh, red curve is the sound sound uh, sound dispersive relations in the extended hydrodynamic regions is different from the first order results. And this dashed curve, this this black dashed curve is what we obtain by by our extended theory by choosing one particular uh, combination of the um, uh, model parameters. So uh, yeah, I, I should emphasize that the mm, uh, of course the in in this MS star series with this uh, choice of the of model parameters, this uh, the sound mode uh, we are no longer dominated dynamics when it crosses with other non-hydrodynamic excitations. But I think what we found really encouraging is, at least this theory, just using this theory, these simple extensions, we significantly extend the descriptions of the sound mode, sound dispersions in, the, in, in these extended hydrodynamic regions. So, uh, so, so, one, so here we presented more detailed comparisons. We make the comparison not only to the phase velocity, uh, not only to the kinetic series, but also to the super Yamil series. We compare with the phase velocities. We compare with the damping rate, and uh, this red band just show results. Uh, about some range of the model parameter of these MS stars. So, so you can see in both cases, uh, in both cases, and in both the uh, sound attenuation and the propagations, we see the uh, um, uh, good, uh, very good uh, descriptions. So I think this does, what does the mean is this extension of star indeed has the uh, flexibilities to describe the uh, kinetic, uh, the, uh, the the important excitation of the kinetic and the CRT in the extended hydrodynamic regions. So um, to first convince you that this uh, it works, I also would like to quickly show you uh, uh, how uh, show you is uh, some results about the response function itself. So previously I showed you the uh, dispersive relations. Now I'm showing you the uh, response response functions. And so here we are considering a slowly expanding plasma so that the uh, the uh, the system is almost linear equilibrated. And then we introduce some energy disturbance and ask uh, how the energy will propagate at the subsequent times. So clearly, uh, so clearly the, uh, the linear rise regions, the, the relation between source and the, uh, and the induced energy density is determined by the response function denoted by G epsilon, G epsilon here. And what we are doing is, uh, first we compute this G epsilon, G epsilon using the RTA kinetic series. And second is we compare the results with the uh, our MS star series with the model parameter we already uh, which we already fixed by matching to the uh, dispersive relations. And so this is the uh, what we get. So uh, so here we show the results as a function of R 
the uh, uh, R, R here is the distances between the source and the, the um, uh, is the distances between the source of the perturbation and uh, and where the observation has been made. And I divided by delta tau the time that the source has been propagated. So this uh, ratio, the uh, so this ratio R or delta tau can be uh, viewed as some velocities or in other words, the peak of the response functions can be interpreted as some effective, um, effective phase velocities. So, uh, and, uh, and uh, we take uh, three uh, different uh, time snapshots. So from the left to right, uh, we, we see that the uh, characteristic uh, wavelength is, uh, uh, is, uh, is decreasing because at a later time, uh, the most of the contribution is from the smaller characteristic uh, case. And in these cases, we do see the, um, the kinetic theory calculations is very similar to the hydrodynamic or first order hydrodynamic results with the peak. Um, the peak here is very close to the uh, sound velocity in the series. But in general, if you go, uh, if you consider the cases that the dominant uh, K is outside the hydrodynamic regions, you can see the peak is uh, deviates from the um, uh, usual ordinary sound velocities and, uh, and and the first order hydro or second order hydro does not give a very good descriptions. So this red band is the results that we obtain from the MSR series, and you can see that it really improves the um, uh, descriptions. Uh, so once again, what that does mean is once we take into account the effects of the high frequency sound, we could also extend the uh, descriptions on the response function by itself. So, uh, so this slide just to show we can also compute in the other uh, response functions like the energy, 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 momentum, etc. And we can see in all cases, we uh, all cases this extended series describes the response uh, reasonably well. So, uh, so this is, uh, I would like to summarize this part of my talks. Uh, Using these slides, so basically we are uh, discuss we are arguing that for a class of series, there are uh, so-called extended regions where the sound mode continuous dominate the dynamics, but uh, is description. But to describe that mode, you should uh, we should use some extension of the hydrodynamic series, and we uh, we pro uh, propose one such series which we call the MS dust. So you may ask, uh, what are the main differences between the other constructions, other extension of the hydrodynamic series? Because clearly extending hydrodynamics uh, is not new, it's not some, something new. Um, but uh, here I think, that, um, uh, for example, uh, uh, for example, uh, for example, um, there are some uh, nice works by Michael Heiler. They introduce some new fields that is coupled to the hydrodynamic fields in order to describe the quasi-normal modes. Uh, that we see in the strong couple series. Um, I think Marcel and, uh, and his collaborators also try to add spin to the, um, uh, to the hydrodynamics. And also near the critical point, the uh, fluctuation uh, uh, relaxes slowly. And this is, and we also need to include it in the hydrodynamics. And this is the so-called hydroplast framework. But I think that the main uh, differences between the MS star and all those series is that although we are introducing some uh, field, we introduce pi one and pi two, pi pi three, etc. But the uh, but in the linearized regions, the relevant slow mode are not increasing. In, uh, we still have the sound the sound mode that is high frequency sound mode that are dominated as dynamics. So that introducing uh, so so that the reason that we are introducing those additional fields is not because we have the additional slow mode, but those modes are really essential so that we have some uh, parameter that we can tune in order to match the dispersive relation of the uh, slowest degree frequency, which is the high frequency sound mode. And this is how we extend the description from the hydro region to the uh, non-hydrodynamic regions. So uh, with that, I want to uh, slightly, uh, I want to switch the topic and uh, talk about the slow modes from a different angles. I'd like to talk about the far from quinibrin and uh, coagulant plasmas. So why? 
and uh, as a people, as a, uh, since I'm doing the heavy on collisions, and, uh, and I, I, I really appreciate the opportunities offered by heavy on collisions because the quark ground matter created uh, experimentally is born out of equilibrium brain. So we can study not only the um, QGP in equilibrium brain, we uh, study equation state. We also have a, a, a have chance to learn of equilibrium brain um, properties. And experimentally, we, uh, there are some interesting and intriguing data in the small colliding uh, systems. On the theory side, we also know there's a, a significant progress. You may heard about the attractors from, from equilibrium hydro, non small fi fixed point, compost framework, et cetera. And there. Uh, so this is the summary of the uh, summary of the uh, recent uh, development. But uh, in my mind, I think that there are still uh, important qualitative questions which are uh, which are still under the debate and uh, our investigation is only at the very initial stages. Namely, in the far front you could bring on um, QGPs uh, uh, in, in the environment that is similar to the initial stage of heavy collisions, do a snow mode exist? And you may also ask, imagine the slow mode exists. What are they? Well, why they are the slow mode? Are they related to the, to the conservative densities? The conservative densities are the slow modes in the near equilibrium limit, but what are the role, what are the fate of those conservative densities? So uh, in order to this, uh, address these uh, questions, we consider some uh, very simplified models to learn something qualitative. So we will consider the kinetic series under the Bioking expansions. So, uh, so basically you can think about the Bioking expansion is some idealization uh, uh, about uh, the medians that are created in heavy on collisions. It assumes that the spatial dependence of any quantities only uh, uh, is only through its dependence on the Bioking time tau. It does not depend on Z and uh, T separately, but uh, it depends on uh, tau uh, in these particular combinations. And another way to think about this Bioking expansion is uh, is this uh, the expand is the expansion rate one or tau introduce an additional scale into the problems. And the next simplification that we will do is consider the RTA kinetic series. So uh, so so now this is how to how it looks like. The particle distribution functions will only depends on tau as well as the momentum. The dynamics of the distribution is driven by the free streaming part of the uh, kinetic theory together with the collision term, which we, we should use the relaxation time and approximations. So here we want, uh, so, so here we introduce some tech, uh, important, I think, a technical point in order to identify the slow modes in the, uh, in the kinetic series. So what we do is introduce, uh, is cons uh, expand the distribution functions in terms of the spherical uh, harmonics. And we will label the spherical harmonics by M. Uh, so M essentially is a measure of the uh, homo uh, euphoria coefficients in the azimuth of, as a uh, in, the, uh, in the transverse play. And uh, L essentially tells you how the, uh, its behaviors as a function of the uh, theta. Uh, so theta is the um, um, theta is the uh, momentum essentially measures the momentum in the longitudinal uh, directions. So here we are. Uh, so we uh, we 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 choose the weight of this definition of the momentum in such a way that it gives the components of the Timmy mu. Uh, for example, the um, the L00 essentially tells you the T00 zeros, and so that by starting moment, we also can be make, uh, we can make a connection to the uh, evolution of the stress energy tensors. And, uh, it's in, uh, 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 in, um, and it's actually very convenient if we organize those moments according to the value of M, I will call the M as the index of spin in the sense that the uh, in, in, in the sense that the different M corresponding to different representation um, uh, associated with the res residual S O two symmetries in the uh, in the transverse place. I will first classify the moments according to parity along the um, along the longitudinal directions. So, so then we could introduce uh, a very big vectors to collect uh, all the uh, moments with the same spin and the parities. And so now what is really nice is if you start with the kinetic series, 
and you substitute the definition of the momentums uh, of the moments. And if you use the uh, some well-known property of about the spherical harmonics, you can derive some matrix equations for for those moments. Or collectively, you can just write down the uh, evolution equation of these big vectors as a matrix, uh, as a uh, as a as a matrix uh, uh, matrix equations, which are quite similar to the uh, equations that you see in the um, quantum mechanics. And because we are using the RT1880 series, actually the moments with the different m or different parity decouples, so we can focus on each of the um, uh, each of the uh, each sectors with the fixed spin and the, the um, parities, and the, their its dynamics is governed by this um, uh, this uh, these matrices. So uh, it's quite natural that we can introduce the um, uh, introduce the slow modes by looking at the eigenvalues of this uh, of this uh, matrices that determines the dynamics. So this matrix is, is non hermitian so the eigenvalue is the complex. And we can think about the uh, decay rate as the uh, decay rate, uh, the measuring part of the eigenvalues as the decay rate. And, uh, uh, and in our uh, situations, this uh, measuring part of the eigenvalues is non-zero because of the expansion and also because the collisions. Uh, so now we can just identify the slow mode. So imagine this, uh, this uh, matrices features uh, a collection of the no naive modes, which are gapped from the others, we could identify them as the slow modes because on the adiabatic um, uh, conditions, those modes we are uh, dominant dynamics. Uh, in fact, in uh, there are a series of papers which demonstrate indeed the and the uh, adiabatic condition is satisfied in the uh, in the uh, Bioking expanding uh, systems. So this makes me uh, so so this allows us just to focus on. Uh, focus on those slow moles, those moles which are gapped with the, uh, the moles with the smaller imaginary part. So, ye yes, I, can I have a question? Hi, mm -hmm, yes. So, uh, do you have like a high level argument uh, arguing how many of slow moles uh, they are mm -hmm. uh, according to these definitions? Um, right. Uh, so, I think that's a very good question. So, the uh, so what we know now is. Uh, in the hydrodynamic limit, you can see there's only um, uh, there are only four slow modes, and the reason is very simple: is the collisional part of the uh, kinetic theory dominates, and the, for the um, for the collisions which preserves energy momentum, there are only four and uh, zero modes. And um, but for the um, but for the far from equilibrium cases, what uh, we found is if you have the um, uh, as all, if there's SO2 symmetries, for each given M, there's only one slow mode. So there's a slow mode in M equals to two sectors, M equals to three sectors, et cetera. So, so in this sense, it's a infinite number of slow modes. But for each given spin, uh, okay, for each given M, there's only one slow mode. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks, yes. Oh, good. Good. Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. I think I would like to elaborate more. Oh, so, and, uh, so, so actually, maybe I, I can have like a small follow up. So, so when you think about the 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 pre scaling dynamics in the setup, right? Like then you have only like a few uh, scaling exponents, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so is it easy to reconcile this with uh, an infinite number of slow modes for you? And um, I think if you think about, I, 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 um, I think in the so-called pre-scaling, they don't consider the absolute the angle dependence. So in most of the early works, the distribution function does not depend on, does not depend on the absolute angle. And the small modes, slow modes that we are talking about today is actually coming from the, um, the, uh, the absolute angle dependence or some, some deformation of the shape of the distribution in the transverse plane. So for, for M equals zero, like there's nothing interesting happening in your- uh, Yeah, the M equals zero is, uh, I think is quite well known, which I will show. But if you go to, yeah, say M equals two, M equals three, you introduce some isotropy in the systems. There are some uh, snow modes that uh, emerge. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, yeah, good. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Right. I think I, I, I guess I almost summarized what I'm going to say, but now that I still uh, begin a little bit slowly. And uh, uh, so here I'm showing you is the uh, eigenmodes for the MA costs for a spin zero and the parity peri even uh, sectors. So one uh, example of the moments in this sector is the T0, zero, zero, right? The, the energy density is the spin zeros and it's uh, even under the uh, flipping of Z to the minus Z. So what I'm showing here is the eigenvalues in the complex place. And I only show you the, the modes, uh, the first five modes, the five modes with the lowest uh, imaginary parts. So you can see in general, and, 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 and by the way, if you, uh, from the purple to the uh, right, we show the modes, which uh, from the early time and the late time, remember the effective Hamiltonian that we are talking about involves in time, so that eigenvalues and agent modes are also involved in times. So what do we found, uh, so uh, the real thing interesting is, if you look at this red circle, I hope you can, and uh, see here, so so the, so uh, so this is the more uh, eigenvalues at the late time, and it is gapped from the all the other modes, and we checked by looking at the, the uh, associated eigenvectors. It is the collection of, uh, collection of the moments such that the only non-zero component is the T zero zeros. So this is nothing but the, the conserved energy densities. It's the usual slow modes in the hydrodynamic limit. And but what is interesting is this mouse actually uh, has its ancestors uh, it, uh, yeah, as showing in this um, um, this purple circles, and uh, you can see uh, at very early times this purple circle is still uh, gapped from the other mode, meaning this can be identified as slow mode in this uh, in this uh, spin zero sectors. And we also checked that the eigen in this case is, however, the eigenvectors contains the other components, uh, other components, meaning that uh, the energy density uh, in the early time limit, the slow models is, in, includes the mixing between the energy density and others and the other slow modes. So in any cases, I think the important message here is, uh, at the uh, in this in at the early time in the season when the system is far from equilibrium brains, there's a still a slow mode that is gapped from the others, and this mode involves and eventually it becomes the hydrodynamics modes. So uh, let us now talk about the consider the cons uh, consider the um, um the longitudinal uh, the parity all the sectors but uh, with spin zeros. One example of such a component is the longitudinal momentum densities, right? Which is obviously uh, parity uh, odd with respect to z to minus z, and uh, and uh, and and once again, so this mode actually uh, is very interesting in the sense that the in the later time limit, it remains gapped from the um, other degree freedoms. But at the early time, this is not the mode with the smallest uh, uh, measuring part, meaning this longitudinal densities, which is a slow mode in the hydrodynamic limit, is not related to the early time slow mode. And but I would really like to highlight is what we found for the uh, higher M sectors, higher spin and higher uh, and, uh, higher higher M sectors or higher spin sectors. But physically, this higher M most describe the shape of the distributions and the shape, uh, the, the eccentricity of the distributions, right? In the transverse place, when we do the homotic expansions, we can have the cosine two phi, cosine three phi, and the what they illustrate is some uh, eccentricity which deviates to the uh, spherical shapes. And, uh, and, and, and in, if you look at the later time limit, all those modes, all those moments will decay at the rate given by one or two hours. This is not a surprise, right? They, they are not conserved, so the collision will relax those modes. But what is remarkable is if uh, at each of the M, at each of those sectors, at a very early time, there's a special mode which is gapped from the uh, which is the gap from the all the other mode, meaning for each of the uh, each of the high speed sectors, there's a slow mode. And it's them, uh, and it's changing rate is come is exactly the same as the other high, uh, other uh, as the lower spin sectors. And the meaning, what does that mean is if you wish to describe the systems at the 
uh, very early time, you need to take into account the um, uh, the uh, those slow modes uh, coming from each of the uh, uh, spin sectors or harmonic sectors, m equals to two, m equals three, etc. Uh, you may ask, well, what is the physics underlying these systems? Why in the autopic equilibrium uh, situations, those modes will um, uh, involve slowly? Of course, in the hydrodynamic limit, they are not relevant in just the relaxed by collisions. And so I think the answer to this question is still under investigations, but uh, uh, we, uh, there might be some hints from some recent development by the Yushika groups. <coughs> so the, uh, the observation that they made is the early time means the collision is limit, the, uh, the kinetic series that described by the, uh, the streaming part of the equations. And in these cases, because of the new well theorems, the phase space volume is preserved in us, so, uh, so, so in other words, the volume cannot involve. What is really involved is the shape, and the, uh, and 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 there are some uh, some degree slow degree freedoms associated with the dynamic uh, dynamics of shapes. And this is my current interpretation of this higher higher uh, higher spin slow mode that describes how the shapes of the phase space distribution that involve. And this is the features that you will only be able to see in the out of equilibrium. So this is, I think is just a quick summarize. So we plot the, so some uh, selection of the modes, the decay rate of a selection of the modes from the uh, near equilibrium limit, the small one or tau, to the uh, large uh, one or tau limit, the far from equilibrium limit. So you can see the, the as usual, the slow modes are the, uh, in the near equilibrium limit are the conservative densities. And in particular, the, uh, if you see this orange dash the curve, this is the longitudinal moment densities. But if you go back to early in time, you can see this longitudinal moment density is not a slow mode. And on the other hand, you can see there's an emergence of, uh, of many, uh, many slow modes coming from each of the M sectors representing the shape of the distributions. And they becomes relevant to, um, uh, they becomes uh, relevant um, to describe the evolution of the um, systems. So uh, of course, uh, our result is based on some simplified kinetic series, but I do think that this demonstrated that the uh, slow modes exist. They be, uh, the number of them may be larger than the number of the hydrodynamic modes, and they uh, and their origin is associated with some physics. I think it's uh, like the dynamic shapes or some other physics, which I think is uh, kind of less explored, but very uh, interesting. So this brings uh, me to the summaries. So uh, I'm talking about the property. Uh, our study is motivated by understanding the QGP properties at the non-hydrodynamic and the non-hydrodynamic regions. So this is the one of the uh, unexplored regions in the study of quark gluon plus uh, quark gluon uh, uh, quark gluon matters, but I guess one can ask uh, similar questions for other strongly coupled systems. What are the properties of the system outside the hydrodynamic regions, but still is quite a long debate. And so I discussed the media response. I argue for a class of series. There's uh, extended regions where the high frequency uh, sound most dominant. And I'm trying to extend uh, the MS series and construct a extension called MS star. Um, and I'm, uh, I demonstrated that this theory can be used to describe the extended hydrodynamic region in a very um, uh, simple, uh, relatively simple ways. Finally, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the far from equilibrium QGPs. We see that the momentum space and anisotropy, which are not usually thought as the hydrodynamic degree of frequency, may be interpreted as slow mode in far from equilibrium sightings. And our discussion is based on kinetic series. I'm really curious to know uh, could the similar stories happen from the holographic side. And, uh, and in future, I think that there are many important things we need to do. But the but the things we uh, uh, because identifying the slow mode is only the first step. I guess next, uh, naturally, the next important step is construct some EFT like series to for the non hydrodynamic and the non perturbative regions. And with such EFT, we could also take into account using, uh, we can use the full toolbox of the field theory. We can also take into account the 
effects of fluctuations, which I have not yet addressed at this moment. So thank you. Thank you very much. That was very interesting um, and informative. So are there any questions beyond the ones that there were already? I see Giorgio has his hand up. Please go ahead. Um, hi. Hi. Yeah, hi. Thanks. hi, how are you? Yeah, thanks for, for an interesting talk. I just I just sort of have a comment that um since you're making a link to experimental data, in experimental you, you mentioned you didn't you didn't think they include fluctuations yet. <laughs> the thing is that in experimental data you seem to have hydrodynamic phenomena in systems with like 20 particles. Mm -hmm. So in your you know, you have your scale with partons at the end, no, the extended hydrodynamic modes in the middle and hydrodynamic modes in the, mm -hmm. in the, um, to the left. Um, first of all, you know, all this hierarchy, yeah, this one here, first of all, all this hierarchy has to be contained in, you know, a comparatively reduced number of particles. Usually here you have like an infinite volume where you use Kubo's formulas and an infinite number of degrees of freedom. Everything seems to work with 20. And secondly, I mean, you talk about Miller Israel Stewart, but the observable isn't even pi mu, you know, you decompose pi mu nu in many, in many uh, pieces. But the observable is not even pi mu nu, it's the total energy momentum tensor. Mm -hmm. Everything else is sort of a somewhat arbitrary decomposition because what we observe mm -hmm. is the energy momentum tensor. Mm -hmm. And sort of given this, given that our observations are, you know, the energy momentum tensor extrapolated on the basis of a few particles per event mm -hmm. um, rather than ensemble average, probably what we observe is a complicated mixture of certainly of what you have in red and what you have in green. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have fluctuations and you don't have a big hierarchy of scales, what you call hydrodynamic and what you call non-hydrodynamic modes probably mix. What mm -hmm. someone, what you call a non-hydrodynamic mode in someone else's uh, hydrodynamics, it's a sound wave that sort of interacts with the thermodynamic fluctuation and the two descriptions should be complementary, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, right. Yeah, I think, thank you so much for the um, comments. So I I think I uh, fully agree. So at this stage, we are want to propose in some uh, theoretical scenarios. And uh, as you mentioned that in the small, uh, people collide in the small systems. If you translate the small colliding systems, into the larger gradient. So the hope is whether there's uh, such a high frequency sounds, whether there's uh, extended hydrodynamic regions, I hope is this can be accessible to the uh, experiments and uh, and some MSR that we are developing may be helpful in this aspect. So that, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for this comment. And of course, fluctuation should be important and uh, I guess that's the next step. I mean, just as an after, just as an after thing. I mean, if you include fluctuations, mm -hmm. I think that you are not entirely sh you are not given a correlation that you measure. If you include mm -hmm. fluctuations, mm -hmm. in principle, you are not sure where it comes from, whether it comes from a hydrodynamic mode or from a non-hydrodynamic mode, mm -hmm. um, uh, because the bottom line is that you measure T mu nu. <laughs> Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, maybe because I didn't understand that and it kind of follows up on a question that Giorgio asked, um, go, could, could you go to the um, slide where you show the sum of different pi A's, pi index A? Um, sure. Because I can already ask my question uh, because it was not the, the separation was not clear to me because each each of those pi mu nu a's is is a um, two tensor right so it has um, uh, it it has um, a number of of components that are independent 
Um, are there any? So I guess, I guess what, what I'm not understanding is is why are you introducing extra? It, it seems like there's there's extra um, degrees of freedom you're introducing if you if you double or triple or you enfold um, right. this, this um, pi mu new tensor components. Right. That's what I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that's a very good question, and I think uh, uh, clearly suppose there's only. Um, a uh, 2D composition is quite easy, right? We just uh, um, um, we just uh, introduced associated tau pi one and tau pi two and eta one and uh, and eta two and um, but I guess at a very deeper level, I think the question you are asking is what would be the uh, physical interpretation of this mode? Why the pi one is different from the pi two? And um, uh, is this what you're asking, Marcia? Um, yeah, in principle, it's just not clear to me. I mean, normally I think of the um, energy momentum tensor decomposition as 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 something that is has a certain number of degrees of freedom, mm -hmm. right? The energy momentum tensor should, right? So you you have a certain number of conserved quantities, and then, mm -hmm. as you pointed out, yeah. there are some modes that are, that. Um, have not directly to do with the conserved quantities, but they are in the same sector as the mm -hmm. conserved quantities, like for example, energy fluctuations, or you mentioned the sound modes that, that are in the same sector that couple to non-hydrodynamic modes. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand the counting here, the counting yes. of un independent um, parameters or variables really that you're introducing. Um, so, so here I think that the, um, the parameter is naively suppose we introduce the um, uh, amount is the 2m, but we require the results uh, reproduce the hydrosis is 2m minus one. And uh, um, I think it's very interesting question is what would be the microscopic interpretation of these modes? But at this stage, I um, and what we are thinking is this is just some constructed theory uh, such that uh, it can be used to match to some other series. So I at this moment, I wouldn't give some concrete uh, physical meaning of it, but this is just a middleman or midwife that we use to, engi to engineering, uh, uh, engineering the high frequency sound model. Okay, it's just thanks. some originary, yeah. yeah. So I think that's the point I want to uh, emphasize this. Uh, for example, like uh, I guess, uh, uh, like in the Miko Hylas uh, early work, they introduced some additional degree freedom so that uh, we can describe the quasi normal modes, not just the hydrodynamic modes, or like what you did with the Hong Kong and uh, uh, the right mission and others. You, you indeed you introduce some tensor uh, degree free some degree freedoms and the symmetric degree freedom in order to describe spin. And uh, the reason I guess uh, the the philosophy is. Uh, uh, those degree of freedoms are what you are interested in. And, but here, what we are interested in is still the high frequency sound wave. But on the other hand, we know the usual MS theory cannot describe it. So that what we do is we introduce some additional field, but we don't introduce the number of snow modes um, such that we use the parameter which parameterize those pies to, uh, sorry, this, the, uh, those parameters associated with these pipes to mimic the dispersive relation of the sound wave. I think that's how we interpret how this really uh, works. So, so, in, in, mm -hmm. so since you mentioned our work, I um, in the paper with uh, um, uh, Hongo et al, the uh, idea is that the spin relaxes slow enough to be considered um, con as, as one of the modes determining right. the relaxation and the oscillations um, of the um, effective theory right. description. Um, the idea is the same. Is, is that what you're saying? You, you are considering um, these, uh, these pi A's um, because uh, those are not gap out by a big um, energy gap, but they are very similar in scale to the hydrodynamic modes. So they are almost conserved. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Maybe I didn't make the point clearly. Maybe let me uh, 
um, maybe give an analogy. So I think maybe an intuitive way to think about our construction is uh, something similar like the C sort uh, uh, mechanism. For example, you have some matrix six like a zero BBM, uh, BBM and uh, you know, right? If you look at the eigenvalues, there's um, lambda minus and the lambda plus. And if you require lambda minus to be um, uh, smaller than lambda plus, what you do here is you require m to be much larger b. So, so in this sense, you can think about m is the mass of some heavy particles. You make the heavy particle very uh, massive, so it's uh, you you always can you can always integrate out. But on the other hand, this massive particle is needed to guarantee that I have a very soft eigenvalues. I think the way I interpret our pi is really like this. Uh, if you consider some simplified cases, you can replace. Um, so, so the matrix, you, you can solve in the linearized M star. So the structure is like the um, uh, KK and, and the one over tau pi A. So this is the how this structure looks like. So it's okay it's because the coupling between the energy density and the pi is uh, proportional to K. And the one over tau pi A just tells you the those pi fields are relaxed. So what they, we found is interesting is in order to guarantee that uh, the uh, the modes associated with the sound is kept from the others, actually we need to introduce some faster degree freedoms, something very similar to the uh, CSO mechanism. Okay. So this you. is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. If, so this is different. We don't. We mode we introduce are not slow, but we need the fast mode. We need some heavy degree freedom to guarantee we have a soft degree freedom outside hydrodynamic region. Good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thanks good. for the explanation. Is there are there any more questions? If that's not the case, then we can stop the recording and let's thank you again. Thank you yeah. so much. Thanks thank also you. for and the discussion and the questions. Yes. Yeah, if you wish, we can. Yeah, we, if you have some questions you want to ask or discuss, I'm also happy to. Yeah.